James, eight captains. That's not out of the norm for you, but having a guy who's number two in the depth chart is. Can you talk us through how, is it a team vote, your vote? How do you get that group this year? Who's number two in the depth chart? Uh, so, oh, gotcha. Um, so, basically, uh, first of all, addressing your point there, Sutherland uh, got voted as a special teams captain. So typically, we'd like to do two on offense, two on defense, and two on special teams, um, I think is the general model. So the entire program votes. So the players vote, the coaches vote, the academic staff votes, the training staff votes, the strength coaches vote. Anybody who's part of our program get, gets a vote. Um, Sutherland got voted as a special teams captain. Blake got voted, obviously, as a special teams captain. The way we do the special teams captain, it can be a specialist or it can be any offense or defensive player that's going to be a starter on multiple units. So that's how that worked out. Um, the three on offense and the three on defense, the reality is the way it played out, we had three guys that dominated votes, and then there was a significant drop after that. And I think actually... Um, forget whether it was offense or defense, but it was within two votes with that second and third guy. So it just it just made sense. You know, it just made sense. Obviously, it's a little bit different for us this year because we are so young um, that a lot of our captains are underclassmen, which to me is probably the one thing that's a little uh, unusual. Um, but that's how we got to eight, uh, Mike. Does uh, having Sean be a captain, is that kind of a testament to his leadership, the way players look at him? It is. I'm also going to tell you, though, that, yeah, he, he has earned everybody's respect. There's no doubt about it. But I would also say, back to your point, that was also part of the three captains deal is, is you know, I want Sean focused on being the quarterback, but I, was, I didn't feel right because he dominated the votes of not making him a captain, but I didn't want so much on his plate. And with three captains, he doesn't maybe feel like he has to – charge that unit if that makes sense takes a little bit off his plate so that was part of it as well yes sir james is, is this the, the best defense that you've had since you've been here well it's hard to say because we haven't played a, a rep yet but at this point you know I, I feel pretty good about it. i think in, in in years past we've had pieces that were really exciting you know um you know obviously you know you, you look at some of the guys and you know carl nassib and some of the guys that really did some special things. Um, we've had pieces, but in terms of really D-line, linebacker, and secondary, feeling pretty good about all of them. I think we all knew, you know, safety, you know, uh, again, we feel really good about them right now, but game time is going to be another evaluation. D-tackles, we feel really good about them right now, but game time is a, is a different evaluation, obviously. But at this point of the season going into it, yeah, I would say so. Uh, I, I think our confidence is pretty high with how we're capable of playing on defense. But I also think you guys know, I mean, you watch some of these early games, you know, in college football and the NFL, the way the game has changed in terms of how much you really tackle. There's very little tackling going on uh, in preseason camp um, that – you know, for, for, for people that have been watching football for a long time, sometimes it's hard to watch early on because there's so many missed tackles and things like that. So we got to go out and do it. We got to go out and execute. But I think a lot of times, too, our effort is so good running to the ball um, and the athleticism that we have. If you miss a tackle but you miss it on the right leverage and you're running to the ball the way you should, hopefully you can disguise some of those early season you know, tackling issues. What are some of the eye tests for the defense? With that being said, you know, not tackling. Is your hair longer than normal? It's extremely long. It's yeah, nice. it's getting to be a pain. It's very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Of hair envy. Thanks. Where does too. God. <laughs> uh, yeah, but what are some of the eye tests that these guys have maybe passed for you to be able to say that? On but, defense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think first of all, it's, it's your point is the eyeball test. We are longer and athletic, more athletic, and our body types. Our guys have done a really good job of changing their body types. They're leaner, uh, more athletic than they've been in the past. And then, and then it also is our testing results, our testing results, um, our depth, you know, our depth at defensive end. Um, not relying on, although we're young, we're not relying on as many true freshmen in significant roles like, like Micah was. Um, 
So I think it's kind of a combination of all those types of things. And then when you got a guy like, you know, Jan Johnson, you know, uh, a veteran guy in the middle um, that not only has really increased his overall athletic numbers and resume, but he, he just so his instincts are so good and he's so smart and he's so in, you know intuitive with everything that he plays even faster. So I just think it's a combination of, of, of all the things that you know that you mentioned. James, Penn State fans are a little sensitive to uniform changes. Uh, have you gotten any feedback on the 150 patches and is that something you guys are committed to wearing the entire season? Yeah, uh, I have not. Um, I know we don't like anything yeah. <laughs> other than what we that what we have i get it i i don't really know if that's an option you i know, think I it think is it but is an option yeah i don't want to that's something oh, you could check into you, yeah. you just yeah you I'm just killed me right there <laughs> um yeah i i think i think everybody's wearing them you know i guess they they can't mandate it but i think everybody in college football is wearing them uh, i haven't seen or heard a lot but now after this question i'll probably get a hundred emails but um but no, I think, you know, I, I get it. You know, our, our uniform, um, we take great pride in that, our history and our tradition, and we should. But there's also paying respect to, to the birth of college football and the history of college football. So, um, you know, I get it. But, uh, you know, again, we're not, we're not going off the, off the rails here. You know, um, we will do, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not, we will do our, our throwback uniforms again. We're going to do that once a year. Uh, moving forward, it was just a year deal, but it went over so well. Our players like it. The fans seem to like it. This year? Yeah. So we're going to do that every year. I probably wasn't supposed to say that. Did you pick the game yet? Did you pick the game yet? Or uh, I don't. Thanks for reading my release this night. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was too busy yeah. checking out the rules on the 150 patch. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But yeah, we'll do that once a year. Um, I think it. I think it went really well. It's a nice little change up for our guys, but not anything that's over the top. Um, so we'll, we're going to do that once a year moving forward. Adding a third assistant in the booth, what was the thought process behind that this year? Why did you pick Tyler? And the headset rule going back to early is going up to 23. What's the difference between 23 and 20 in your eyes? I'm sorry, the last point I had to say again? The headsets went from 20 of them, I think, last year. Now it's back to 23 or up to 23. Why, does, why do those three extra ones matter? For us yeah. specifically? Yeah. Um, it, it really is all based on our personnel. And some guys have, are out of the window. You have some rules based on how long you've been out of football. There's rules. I think it's a 10-year window that you're allowed to be on or off if you're not a full-time coach and things like that. So some guys have fallen out of that window now. Um, but really, it's just taking advantage of our personnel. Um, it's how our staff works together. Um, Brent calling the defense who he wants up there with him. Uh, we've had less turnover on the defensive side of the ball. On the offensive side of the ball, who, who Ricky's going to get the most feedback from. And then also, I think it's the presence and the strength of your personalities on the sideline. If your coordinator is going to be in the booth, you got to make sure you got strong personalities to manage um, the sideline and also kind of be able to kind of um, determine the temperature and, and what the team needs and those types of things. There is value of the coordinators being on the sideline in terms of getting a feel for what the team may need at that moment. But obviously, in, in just calling a game from the pure form of calling it, it the best place to do it, I think, is, is, is in the booth. Um, so it really just is based on personnel and, and fit and uh, you know what, how we're maximizing our staff the best we possibly can. But some of it goes back to that rule. We got one guy that I think this is year 11 for him, and he falls out of that window now. James, there's a lot of layers when it comes to playing quarterback on the mental side. Where is uh, Sean in his development as a quarterback? Not just in your offense, but at the position of playing quarterback. Where is he on his mental journey as a quarterback? Yeah, I, I think good. I think his his time with Trace, I think, was really valuable. I, I really do. I think whenever you can have a guy, I know everybody wants to start as freshman, but there is value of sitting behind a guy and learning what the guy does well, learning from some of the mistakes that they make. Um, you know, when I was in when I was in the NFL with the Green Bay Packers, we drafted Aaron, and you know, I'd make the argument, you know, Aaron sitting behind Brett for a couple of years. There's value in that. You know, there really is. There's been a bunch of quarterbacks that I think have played too early in the NFL and college, and you know, maybe maybe it's ruined it. You know, sometimes. Um, so I think that was a big part of his development. I think how we practice in terms of situational football, 
running legitimate two-minute situations, doing competitive third down periods against our defense, four-minute live scrimmages during training camp because there's no other really way to do four-minute but, but for it to be live. Um, I think that helps. So then you can talk through situations. Uh, you can go through it on film as well. Um, you know, it's all those things. But I, I'm, I'm pleased with where he's at. Again, you got to go out in the field and you got to do it. Uh, when the bolts are flying and there's 100,000 fans and, and um, you know, they can hit you. Because right? I think that's the other hard part with young quarterbacks. Sometimes it's not realistic. They're in the pocket and they're hitching and hitching and hitching. And, and if you were live at practice every single day, I don't know if you would do that. So it's getting guys to understand, and it, that's that's always kind of the evolution for them. Are you taking game speed reps? Are you taking game like reps, or are you doing things in practice that if you did that in the game, it's going to be a sack, it's going to be a sack fumble, you know, it's going to be a sack and the ball goes up and it's interception because it's not realistic, you know. But it, it's the fine line. And then you got some guys that are really mobile guys that they almost get penalized for it because you never get to see that aspect of their game, if that, if that makes sense. Um, but I'm, I'm pleased with where he's at overall. James, Time we, for got, two more. we got Robert Winter on the phone this morning. He talked about how focused he was. and He's a rare fifth-year guy in your lineup. Um, can you discuss where he's at right now in terms of uh, his progress on the field and taking some of the younger players under his wing? I probably want to talk first, though, about his overall development from the time he got here to now is dramatic. I mean, I told him the other day, I pulled him aside, you know, I, I couldn't be more proud of him in terms of how far he's come and how much he's matured as a football player, as a student, as a teammate, all of it, you know, all of it. He has really maximized his experience here. I think he's gonna have a huge year for us as a football player, um, you know, you know, his family has been awesome, just all those things. And then, you know, I, th I think your point is a good one. I think he is taking a lot of pride in his role of being an older guy on the team and taking the young guys under the, the wing. Uh, we got some, I think, talented freshman defense alignment in his class and, and a defensive tackle. I will tell you um, kind of another example, um, kind of branching off from what you just asked me, but. You know, uh, Darkwa, I want you guys to get to know Darkwa. You know, I think you guys are going to love him. Um, he came up to me, said, Coach, I need to meet with you. And usually when I get that, it's, it's, it's not good. Um, it's the same like when I call them. I call them and I'm, it's like I'm the principal call. And it's always something negative and it's not. And it's not. But, you know, uh, so I grabbed him. I said, you know, what's up? And he's like, I just wanted to tell you, I woke up yesterday morning and I woke up so appreciative and so thankful for being here at Penn State. And, you know, I, it, it really made my day and made my week because we probably don't get enough of that. And I'm not talking for me, I'm talking for Penn State. A kid waking up and so appreciative and so thankful for this opportunity is like, I almost can't even believe I'm here. You know, so that that was that was awesome. I've told the staff, I've kind of told everybody about it because it was special. But he's one of those kids that's going to have the opportunity to come up under a fifth-year senior, which I think is becoming more and more uncommon. You know, in our in our sport. Um, so you know, I think Rob's going to have a big impact on him. Maybe in some ways that Trace had on um, Sean. James, uh, I believe Donovan Johnson wasn't listed on the most recent depth chart. What, what is his status? For you? Uh, he won't play the first game. Uh, he's got. He's been suspended for a violation of team rules. It's just Thanks, the coach. first game. Thanks, coach. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.